So we just finished looking at benzene, now, which is an aromatic compound. Now let's look at the molecular orbitals for cyclobutadiene, which is an anti-aromatic compound. Now we can do the same process that we did for benzene, which is we're going to draw this molecule with a vertex pointing in the downward direction here, just like this. And we'll just add in some double bonds in there. And then when we draw the molecular orbital diagram, we'll have one bond down here, two right there, and then one up here. And what this is going to do is we've got two, two electrons here, two there, so that's four total. So I'm gonna start filling these orbitals. When I get up here, I'm gonna notice, whoa, I've got unpaired electrons here. That's not stable. Uh, we generally like to have electrons paired up when they're in an organic molecule. And so that's, a, that's kind of a flag right there. We've got unpaired electrons. And furthermore, these are directly in between what would be a um, bonding orbital right here and an antibonding orbital right there. This is actually non-bonding. So these are in non-bonding orbitals. And we'll see that in just a minute. So let's look at what happens here. So again, we're going to use our pictorial method for drawing these orbitals. And we'll start with the lowest energy one, which is a bonding orbital. And we'll shade all the appropriate size ones. So there is a bond and it's going to cover the whole molecule here. Next, we get into these non-bonding orbitals. And if I draw just one, you may say, oh, that looks like it's bonding to me. Um, but in fact, it will be non-bonding when we consider the other orbital. So we'll need one nodal plane here. So we've got this one. And like I say, you might think, oh, that looks kind of bonding, right? Because I've got uh, what would be constructive interference right here, and I have the same thing right over here. But that's not the only orbital we have. We've got another one over here, and there's only one electron in this orbital, right? So there's one electron in this orbital, and it's helping to bond these two together and those two together. But then we've got the other story over here. And this is going to really show why this is anti-aromatic. So we still need one nodal plane, right? We need these to be the same energy. We drew them with the same energy up here, and they're going to be. So we just need to move where the nodal plane is. So in this case, here's our nodal plane. Now you might see the problem. Over here, I have my one electron and it's helping to create a bond between these two carbons and these two carbons. And it is not helping to create a bond in between these, right? It, in fact, it is repelling these two carbons away, right? Because that does not constructively interfere here, right? These are, these are different polarities. But then I look over here and I say, oh, well, the electron over here is helping to bond these two together, but it's pushing those two apart. So you can see, I've got one electron fighting the bond in between here. I've got one electron trying to make it. I've got an electron trying to make bonds here, and I've got another electron over here trying to rip that part of that apart. The net effect is it doesn't create a bond anywhere here. 
that is one of the reasons, or a major reason, why this was such a hard molecule to make. Because that stability is just not there. Okay, now finally we can come up to our antibonding orbital, which of course is not going to have constructive overlap anywhere on the molecule. So we've got two nodal planes here, which is the maximum number for this molecule. And if we had this populated, this would um, break the molecule apart. So that's just a little look at the molecular orbitals and cyclobutadiene, um, keeping in mind that we're really only, only examining the pi system. Um, so really just the four um, p orbitals that are not hybridized as part of uh, the, the rest of the structure there. And hopefully this explains why cyclobutadiene is not stable and anti-aromatic.